So here we are in our R studio with our Coursera.R file, and we're moving on to the scenario where we're comparing the uh, number of distinct pages visited in an A-B test, uh, and we're going to go through a, a few analyses to do that here. And uh, as the comment indicates, what we'll be doing is an independent samples t-test, and we'll, uh, we'll talk more about that as we go. So uh, as is our usual procedure, we'll read in one of the data files uh, that goes with this work, and that is uh, uh, pgviews or pageviews.csv. So we'll read that in. Uh, and as is our typical process here, we'll take a view of what that is uh, so we can be comfortable with it. So you can see we have a subject column. So we can see that each subject is measured just once, it seems. Uh, and then a site column. So which site were they issued, A or B? Uh, and as I scroll down here, it kind of refreshes. I'll go all the way to the bottom, and then it'll refresh. And so we do have 500 subjects, as we, as we said in the description. Uh, and then a column called pages. And it looks to be pretty much kind of single digits, uh, single digit counts of how many pages were viewed. Uh, looks like uh, obviously one would be a minimum, we would guess. And uh, I saw maybe a 10 in there or an 11 in there is maybe a maximum. We can find out more formally what those are. That gives us a sense of what we're dealing with. Uh, we'll go ahead and recode that subject fact as a that subject column as a factor since it's just a number. It thinks it's a numeric variable, but as we've now talked about variable types, we uh, we know we want it to be a factor. It won't be used directly in this analysis, but uh, we're going to keep doing this good practice because as we uh, progress in the sophistication of our analyses, we'll see that we end up using uh, subject later. Uh, and then let's go ahead and take a little summary view. Uh, we can see that uh, there are you know, 500 distinct, these six plus 494 other distinct uh, levels of subject. That's just the subject identifier. Uh, it looks like 245 of those subjects were exposed to site A, 255 to site B, so very nearly a 50-50 test, uh, and certainly kind of a realistic outcome as, as often is the case. Uh, and then here, because pages is a numeric response variable, uh, it, it computes uh, for us a min and a max, 1 and 11 there, uh, and some other data. We can see the mean is, is right near 4 and the median is 4. Uh, we'll also look a little bit more at some descriptive statistics uh, using the, the plier library. Uh, this function, uh, ddply, ddply uh, allows us to uh, apply a function over certain uh, uh, aspects of the table. And remember, I'll remind you, you can always type a question mark uh, and then a function name, assuming that the library for it is loaded, and it'll bring up the help for that name. So ddply is uh, split a data frame, apply a function, and return results in a data frame. Uh, so what we, what we see as input here is the data table itself is page views. Uh, we want to split by, by site and apply this, this inline function where we are summarizing over the, the pages um, uh, by site. So when we do that, we can see for each site, A and B, uh, we can see now uh, some of the same statistics that we saw before overall, but now split by site. So we can see the mean for site A is 3.4, the mean for site B is 4. Point, uh, almost 4.5. So that suggests there may be a difference, but we've learned that comparing means directly is not the full story. We need to know something about the variance. So this other uh, function allows us to summarize and get the, the, the mean uh, number of pages, which we have here, but also then the standard deviation, uh, which would be of interest. You can see that in the, the site A condition, uh, there was uh, a standard deviation about half the size uh, of the number of pages viewed in the site B condition. So there were more pages viewed in, in site B, but, uh, but also with greater deviation ar around that mean. Uh, one way to view that is with a histogram. So we can call the hist function, and we can look at the page views um, uh, for site A uh, and the number uh, of pages. Um, so I think uh, we can just graph that there, and we can see uh, a, a couple things about this. We can kind of see the range from this from about 1 to 6. Uh, we can see um, in site A, we can see it looks to be you know, kind of a normal distribution, kind of a, a bell curve or a Gaussian curve there. Uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, a histogram of, of site B. And here we can see something a little bit different. There, there are uh, a few, very few uh, number of pages visited up above sort of 7 and 8 and, and 10, uh, quite a few down lower. doesn't quite look like a bell curve. It's, it doesn't look normally distributed. And those kinds of, of considerations uh, will come up 
uh, as we go forward in the course. For now, we're going to ignore those differences, but they are relevant, and we will talk about them more in the future. Another way to look at the data, too, is a box plot. So with the plot command, we can see pages by site, uh, and now we understand that notation a little better, pages being the, the y variable, the outcome, uh, by site, which is our independent variable, or our x variable, if you will. Uh, in the meantime, then, we're going to execute our independent samples t-test. Why is it independent samples? What does that mean? Well, remember that factors can be between subjects or within subjects. And between subjects is the type of factor that site would be because each visitor gets either website A or B, but not both. So it's an independent samples t-test. In the future, we'll see a paired samples t-test that is appropriate for a within subjects situation. Uh, you can see this parameter at the end to t-test var equal. That's saying the variance is equal. We can see in this box plot that's obviously not true. Uh, and we'll formalize that consideration as we go, as I said, in the future. But for now, we'll just do a basic uncorrected t-test, assuming that the variance is equal. In reality, t-tests are fairly robust to, to changes and in, in, in deviations in variance. They don't have to be exactly equal anyway. Um, so let's go ahead and execute that. And we can see we have the t-test here. Well, what's this output mean? So the data confirms we're looking at pages by site. And that's, in fact, exactly the design we talked about. The t value is the t statistic. So just like with the chi-squared statistic in the, in the previous things we went through, the t statistic is the value uh, of, of the t, um, uh, the value in the t distribution that we're, we are getting from this, this data. The degrees of freedom is 498, uh, obviously related to the 500 subjects that we have there. Uh, and then the p-value is very, very small, far less than uh, 0 0.0001. So uh, that's about all we care about, but, but very near zero. Uh, some other results as well, we can see the mean for group A and B are like we saw before in those summary statistics. So the bottom line here is we have a, a significant um, difference between uh, the number of pages visited in website condition A and B. Okay, so that is the t-test for our uh, simple uh, website A-B test. And uh, it might suggest to us that uh, people visit, because people visit more distinct pages in website B, maybe we, maybe we go with that. Um, let's return now to our table of analyses and see where this has brought us. Uh, as you know from before, we completed the top uh, test of proportions table previously, and now we've come down to the analysis of variance table, and we're in that first row, and what's turned red there is that independent samples t-test that we just did. Uh, if we look on the left column, it has one factor, uh, that was pages, it had two levels, and it was a between subjects factor, so that's what the third column with the b means. Uh, and we're in a parametric test, and next time we talk, we'll get more into what the difference between parametric tests and non-parametric tests are. But you can see the table sets up a sort of equivalence relationship, where if we're in a parametric situation, we have certain tests, and if we're in a non-parametric situation, we have others. For now, you can think of the difference as whether or not we can make certain assumptions about the data, which are required for parametric tests. For example, that the data is normally distributed is a common assumption we'll have to contend with. And for many measures, uh, the, the data is. We can see in these box plots, however, that for site visit A, um, uh, the data is clearly not normal, and we saw that in the histogram as well. Uh, so that's the difference between those columns, and we'll formalize that more as we go. But we've done the independent samples t-test, and uh, that's where we'll leave it for now. Let's see how we would report that t-test result in writing. So let's see how we would report our t-test from our website A-B test. So we analyzed page views, and uh, our result was uh, a t-test, which we indicate here. It has one parameter for its degrees of freedom, and that was 498. So this is its degrees of freedom. Uh, this is the test type, obviously. And the test statistic was, uh, was 7.21. Uh, in our case, it came out as negative 7.21, uh, 
Uh, you can put that in or, or not. It's up to you. And really, it just means uh, which which order the the two levels of um, uh, of the website were in. If you compare uh, A to B, then you'll get negative 7.21. If you flip that and compare B, the difference in the mean of B to A, then it'll be positive 7.21. So it really doesn't matter whether you have the, the minus sign or not. So that's the statistic. And then the p-value, and we've talked about how to report those. So we, uh, we can use the, the p is less than 0 0.0001, uh, given how small the p-value was. Um, so that's how we would report our t-test uh, for the independent samples t-test for page views.